Hi fellow reefers, this is Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquarium. In today's video I'm going to go over a description of how to, actually a demonstration of how to use the Sally Fur Calcium Test Kit. Very simple, very easy, and not as complicated as some people might think it is. So here we go. Uh, let me open the package and you'll see what's included here. Okay, this is the uh, test tube where we put the amounts in, different liquids that we're going to be using, powders, the uh, 1 ml needle, the applicator, and the other needle to extract the water from the tank. Okay, and here are the instructions. Besides the instructions, uh, you also have the uh, scale, so when you get the reading, you can read off and here it will tell you uh, the average if it's within or not. So let's start. Okay, the first thing it says is uh, add with a syringe 2 ml of water in the test valve. So this is the uh, 2 ml. Let's go ahead and add some water. Okay. Okay. Then the second step, it says to add one spoon of cow one. Okay. Cow one is this, so we're going to add one scoop. Let me put this over here. Okay, here we are. Step three is this add eight drops of cow two. And once you add the eight drops of cow two, uh, you have to you have to swirl it for ten seconds, not shake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's put this down here. Now remember, you're supposed to swirl it, not uh, shake it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you notice, it's got like a reddish, pinkish color. Okay, now, the next step is put the plastic tip, which I already did. Uh, firmly on the 1 ml syringe and draw into the syringe from cow 3 which is this one here uh, 1 ml to the mark okay I'll show you what that actually means okay, okay let's see here I always go over it and then I, I put back the remaining liquid. Okay, what it says is to the mark, uh, when you draw the liquid, the lower part of the rubber, um, or whatever you want to call it, um, suction or whatever, or marker, should be at the 1 ml. Now what you're supposed to uh, put now is you start to apply the liquid into this vial. What I do is I usually put like half of it because I already know more or less what the amount is going to be and you swirl. You keep swirling until it turns like a bluish color which is the other um, instructions. Again like I said I'm not going drop by drop because I'm all this no uh, and you you would get to know that as you go along you know that uh, more or less like half of the syringe or a little more uh, it's when you really start to get a little, uh, okay, we keep swirling, twirling. Okay. Here we go.
okay, you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it from there, but you're going to notice that on the front, here you notice there's a little air, um, a vacuum. That's uh, produced because of the needle. Uh, before it starts to get liquid, uh, you're going to have that discrepancy, but that's, that's okay, that's fine, that's understood when it comes to the calibration and the measurements on, on this test. Okay, here's where I start to get precise. If you notice, there you go, the liquid is starting to change. Let's hit one more drop. And there we are. Okay. It's a blue color, as you noticed. Now what you're going to do is, you're going to go to the syringe, but this you're going to go to the top part, and you're going to see what the measurement is. Okay, the measurement, the measurement is exactly, exactly 0.1 ml. So we go here and we check 0.1. There it is, 0.1. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but 0.1, 0 0.1 is telling me that my calcium is at 450. Okay, now you go down here and it says that normal sea water contains uh, 425 to 450 parts per million of calcium. So I'm right on target. Now one final thing that I want to bring up is uh, sometimes why does the um, calcium goes down or a little down on the tanks? Well there's a couple of, uh, of reasons. One of them is of course uh, skimming. You know uh, when you uh, are skimming the water with a protein skimmer sometimes uh, it'll take uh, minerals out of the, the water, thus uh, causing a little lower reading of the calcium. That's why you have additives. You have like uh, calc washer that you would put on your reservoir for your ATO, or uh, you can use the drip method to bring the calcium up, or you can use what I use, which is the uh, bionics, the part A and B. Another reason, uh, and this is the main reason why calcium sometimes uh, will go down and that's why you that's why these test kits exist why you have to uh, bring up the calcium is the bio load by this I mean the amount of corals now if you were to look back on my videos when I started to video uh, this project the uh, nano cube 9 you'll notice that I had less corals now in the addition of from you know from that time span to now not only have I added more corals, but they have also grown. And all of these corals do really depend on calcium, even the live rocks and all that. So although the live rocks won't grow, but things like uh, SPS and other corals, as they grow and as you add more corals, they're going to consume more calcium. So the higher the bio load, the more they are going to consume uh, from the water calcium and therefore that's why you have to be checking your calcium levels to see uh, if they are in target or not. Uh, matter of fact, when you start a, a new uh, saltwater aquarium uh, reef, when you check your parameters, everything's going to be in check. Your pH, your alkalinity, your calcium, no nitrates, everything is going to be in check because there's no organisms in the tank. But as you go along and you go along and you start to add corals and corals start to consume and you add more corals and more corals and the corals start to grow and expand and spread that's when you're going to have the depletion of calcium so that's why you have to be checking your calcium I'm not saying check your calcium every day every other um, day but I would say like once or twice a week check it and, and see how they are, if they are in check. What I usually do, in my case, since this tank is very small, I do two water changes on, on this tank. I do a 10% water change on Wednesday and a 10% water change tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, so being that the case, since uh, uh, all those minerals and all those elements are there on that water, then mainly, mainly, I really don't have to be uh, adding additives. Sometimes I might and I might not. 
And again, as you notice, this is a small tank. I don't have a protein skimmer, so it's not taking out anything from the water. If I don't have, um, you know, protein skimmer, then it's not skimming uh, that much minerals because uh, there's nothing to, to skim. So I rely on water changes. Now on the 40, which is um, on my right hand side, uh, that's a different story. I am going to be putting a ghost skimmer. I'll be skimming the water so that I would have to be uh, checking more detail the calcium because it is going to draw uh, not, not, not only protein from the water, but they also, protein skimmers tend to draw minerals out of it. And then, of course, the addition of corals, corals growing, that's another factor. So I thought that uh, this is the topic that I would bring up today. I hope you found it great, enjoyable. And if you liked the video, if you found it enjoyable, don't hesitate to hit the like button. Make a comment on this video or subscribe to my channel. And like I always say at the end of all my videos, happy reefing. Thank you. Bye-bye.